Remember what all we learnt in your previous lesson? We learnt that a linear equation is an equation of degree 1 and a quadratic equation is an equation of degree 2. A quadratic equation is of the form a x square plus b x plus c equal to 0, where a, b and c belongs to the set of real numbers and a is not equal to 0. What else did we learn in that lesson? We also learned to find out roots of a quadratic equation by factorization method. But could we find roots of all quadratic equation by that method? No, we could not find the roots of the equation x square plus 5 x plus 5 equal to 0 by that method. So, how do we find roots of such a quadratic equation? In this lesson today, we are going to explore ways to find roots of such a quadratic equation. Consider the equation a x square plus b x plus c equal to 0, where a, b and c belongs to the set of real numbers and a is not equal to 0. Let this equation be number 1. Now, we want to change this expression into a perfect square form that is an expression of the form x plus y whole square. Do you know what is its expansion? Its expansion is x square plus 2 x y plus y square. So, for that let us multiply equation 1 by a. What do we get? We get a square x square plus a b x plus a c equal to 0. Now, from this you can very well see that this first term is a perfect square form that is a x whole square form which is analogous to this term x square. But in the second term we need an expression which is of the form 2 x y that means we need 2 here. For that we must multiply this whole expression by 4. So, what do we get now? If we multiply this expression by 4, we get 4 a square x square plus 4 a b x plus 4 a c equal to 0, which gives us 2 a x whole square plus this expression can be written as 2 times 2 a x multiplied by b plus let us keep this term as it is 4 a c equal to 0. Now, for a while let us forget this term and concentrate on these two terms. As we already said that this first term is analogous to the first term here. The second term here now is analogous to the second term here. So, what do we add to these two terms to give us an expression of the form x plus y whole square? Obviously, if we add b square to these two terms, we get 2 a x whole square plus 2 times 2 a x into b plus b square, which gives us 2 
a x plus b whole square. These three terms combine to give us 2 a x plus b whole square, which is now of the form x plus y whole square. But can we add any term to any expression? No, because that will change the value of the expression. So, what do we do to keep the value of this expression same? We subtract the same term. Since we are adding b square here, we will subtract b square from this same expression, so that the value of the expression remains same and we add 4 a c, which was already there equal to 0. Now, as I already said that these three expressions combine to give us an expression 2 a x plus b whole square and we are left with minus b square plus 4 a c equal to 0, which is nothing but 2 a x plus b whole square equal to, let us take these two terms to the right hand side, we get b square minus 4 a c. Let this equation be 2. Thus, we have written equation number 1 in the form of equation number 2. So, if alpha is a root of equation 1, then alpha will also be a root of equation 2. Let alpha be a real root of equation 2. Then substituting x is equal to alpha in this equation 2, the left hand side of the equation becomes 2 a alpha plus b whole square, which is a square of a real number. Therefore, it must be non-negative. That means, it must be greater than or equal to 0. Now, since the left hand side of equation 2 is non-negative and greater than or equal to 0, therefore, the right hand side of equation 2 must also be non-negative. That means, b square minus 4 a c must also be greater than or equal to 0. If the quadratic equation a x square plus b x plus c equal to 0 has a real root, then b square minus 4 a c must be non-negative or greater than or equal to 0. Let us see what happens the other way round. When b square minus 4 a c is greater than or equal to 0, then obviously, under root of b square minus 4 a c will exist and it will be a positive number. So, that gives equation number 2 becomes 2 a x plus b is equal to under root plus minus under root b square minus 4 a c. which gives us 2 a x is equal to, now this b can be taken to the right hand side and becomes minus b plus minus under root of b square minus 4 a c. And from these two, we get x is equal to minus b plus minus under root of b square minus 4 a c upon 2 a. Thus, what do we conclude here again? If b square minus 4 a c is greater than or equal to 0, then the quadratic equation a x square plus b x plus c equal to 0 has real roots alpha and beta, which are Greek letters given by alpha is equal to minus b plus under root of b square minus 4 a c upon 2 a and beta is equal to minus b minus under root of b square minus 4 a c upon 2 a. Now, from this 
what do we conclude? As we already said that if b square minus 4 a c is greater than or equal to 0, then the quadratic equation a x square plus b x plus c equal to 0 has real roots alpha and beta. But let us see what happens when b square minus 4 a c is equal to 0. If b square minus 4 a c is equal to 0, then the roots will be real, but what added quality it will acquire? The roots as we know are alpha is equal to minus b plus under root of b square minus 4 a c upon 2 a and beta is equal to minus b minus under root of b square minus 4 a c upon 2 a. So, if this term becomes equal to 0, then the roots will remain as minus b upon 2 a and beta will again be equal to minus b upon 2 a. If b square minus 4 a c is equal to 0, then the quadratic equation a x square plus b x plus c equal to 0 has real and equal roots. And from this we can also conclude that if b square minus 4 a c is only greater than 0, then the roots of the equation will be distinct given by alpha is equal to minus b plus under root of b square minus 4 a c upon 2 a and beta is equal to minus b minus under root of b square minus 4 a c upon 2 a. Do you know who gave us this method to find out the roots of a quadratic equation? It was Sri Dharacharya around 1025 AD who gave us this method of finding the roots of a quadratic equation. This method is called the method of completing the square. But children, can you tell what happens when b square minus 4 a c is less than 0? Let us again refer to equation number 2. When b square minus 4 a c becomes less than 0, that means when it becomes negative, then the left hand side of this equation 2 will also be negative. Can you think of a real number alpha such that 2 a alpha plus b whole square is negative? No, because 2 a alpha plus b whole square is the square of a real number and square of a real number can never be negative. Thus, we conclude that if b square minus 4 a c is less than 0, then the quadratic equation a x square plus b x plus c equal to 0 has no real roots. What can you say about this expression b square minus 4 a c? We find that this expression tells us or describes to us the nature of the roots of a given quadratic equation. In fact, it discriminates between the roots of a given quadratic equation. That is why this expression is called discriminant of a quadratic equation a x square plus b x plus c equal to 0 and we represent this by capital D. So, let us summarize what all we have learnt up to now. We have learnt that if a x square plus b x plus c equal to 0, a is not equal to 0 is a given quadratic equation, then d is equal to b square minus 4 a c is called its discriminant. If d is greater than 0, that means if d is positive, then the equation will have real and distinct roots alpha and beta given by alpha is equal to minus b plus under root of b square minus 4 a c upon 2 a and beta is equal to minus b minus under root of b square minus 4 a c upon 2 a. d is equal to 0, then the equation will have real and equal roots 
namely minus b upon 2 a and if d is less than 0, then the equation will have no real roots. On the basis of these observations, can you determine the nature of the roots of a given equation without actually finding out the roots of the equation? Consider the equation x square plus 5 x minus 2 equal to 0. In order to find out the roots of this equation, first of all we need to find out its discriminant that is d and we know that d is equal to b square minus 4 a c which is equal to b is 5 here. So, 5 square minus 4 times a is 1 and c is minus 2 which is equal to 25 minus minus becomes plus 8 which is equal to 33. So, can you tell me what will be the nature of the roots of this given equation? Yes, since we find that d is positive that is greater than 0, therefore the roots of this equation will be real and distinct. Can you find out the roots of this equation? Yes, we know that, that the roots of this equation will be alpha equal to minus b plus under root of d upon 2 a and beta is equal to minus b minus under root of d upon 2 a, whereas you know that d is equal to b square minus 4 a c. So, alpha will be equal to in this case minus b that is minus 5 plus under root of 33 upon 2 because a is 1 and b is equal to minus 5 minus under root of 33 upon 2 to 1. Hence, the two real and distinct roots of this given quadratic equation are alpha is equal to minus 5 plus under root of 33 upon 2 and beta is equal to minus 5 minus under root of 33 upon 2. Can you determine the nature of the roots of this equation 2 x square minus 5 x plus 4 equal to 0? For that again we need to find out its discriminant that is d is equal to b square minus 4 a c which in this case will be minus 5 whole square because b is minus 5 minus 4 into a is 2 and c is 4. That gives us 25 minus 32 which is equal to minus 7. Now, can you tell what will be the roots of this equation or what will be the nature of the roots of this equation? Yes, since we find that d is negative that is less than 0, therefore, this equation will not have any real roots. Children, can you find out the nature of the roots of this equation x square plus 6 x plus 9 equal to 0? Let us again find out d for that. d is again equal to b square minus 4 a c which is equal to 6 square minus 4 into 1 into 9 and which is equal to 36 minus 36 which is equal to 0. So, can you tell what will be the nature of the roots of this equation? Yes, we find that since here d is equal to 0, therefore, this equation will have real and equal roots. Can you also find out these roots? We know that if the equation has real and equal roots, then the roots are alpha is equal to minus b upon 2 a and beta is again equal to minus b upon 2 a. So, in this case the roots of this equation will be alpha is equal to minus b that is minus 6 upon 2 and a is 1 and beta is again same that is minus 6 upon 2 into 1. Hence, the two roots are alpha is equal to minus 3 and beta is again equal to minus 3. 
Now, consider the equation x square minus 7 x plus 12 equal to 0. Let us find out the roots of this equation. For that, first of all, we need to find out whether there exists any real root or not for this equation. So, we need to find out d there, d is equal to b square minus 4 ac, which is equal to minus 7 whole square minus 4 into 1 into 12, which is equal to 49 minus 48, which gives us 1. Thus, we find that since d is greater than 0, that is positive, therefore, this equation will have real and distinct roots. Let us find those roots. We apply the formula alpha is equal to minus b plus under root of d upon 2 a and beta is equal to again minus b minus under root of d upon 2 a. That gives us minus of b that is minus of minus 7 plus under root of 1 because d is 1 upon 2 a that is since a is 1 I am simply writing 2 here and beta is equal to minus of minus 7 minus under root of 1 upon 2. So, thus we find that our two roots, distinct roots of this equation are alpha is equal to 7 plus 1 upon 2 and beta is equal to 7 minus 1 upon 2, because under root of 1 is 1 and hence the two roots again let us find out. We have 7 plus 1 is 8, 8 upon 2 is 4 and beta is equal to 7 minus 1 is 6, 6 upon 2 is 3. Now, consider the quadratic equation a x square plus b x plus c equal to 0. Let alpha is equal to minus b plus under root of d upon 2 a and beta is equal to minus b minus under root of d upon 2 a with the two real roots of this given quadratic equation. Then the sum of the roots will be alpha plus beta is equal to minus b plus under root of d upon 2 a plus minus b minus under root of d upon 2 a, which is equal to taking 2 a as the LCM, we get minus b plus under root of d minus b minus under root of d, which gives us minus 2 b upon 2 a, which is nothing but minus b upon a. Thus, we find that if alpha and beta are the roots of this quadratic equation, then the sum of its roots that is alpha plus beta is equal to minus b upon a, which is nothing but minus coefficient of x, that is b upon coefficient of x square, that is a. Similarly, if we want to find out the product of the roots, that is alpha into beta, then we will get minus b plus under root of d upon 2 a multiplied by minus b minus under root of d upon 2 a. This is equal to, now the numerator is nothing but a plus b into a minus b form. So, we all know that is a square minus b square. So, minus b whole square minus under root of d whole square upon the denominator becomes 4 a square, which is equal to b square minus this is d upon 4 a square, which is nothing but equal to b square minus. Now, d as we already know is b square minus 4 a c, but this minus with this minus becomes plus 4 a c upon 4 a square. That gives us 4 a c 
upon 4 a square which is equal to c by a. What is c in the given equation? In the given equation c is the constant term and a is the coefficient of x square. So, we will find that if alpha and beta are the roots of the given quadratic equation a x square plus b x plus c equal to 0, then the product of the roots is equal to c by a that is the constant term upon the coefficient of x square. Hence, we can generalize this as if a x square plus b x plus c equal to 0, a is not equal to 0 is a given quadratic equation, alpha and beta are its real roots, then sum of the roots is equal to alpha plus beta which is equal to minus b upon a which is equal to minus coefficient of x upon coefficient of x square and product of the roots that is alpha beta is equal to c by a which is the constant term upon coefficient of x square. Can you now find out the sum and the product of the roots of a given equation without actually finding the roots? For example, take an equation 6 x square minus x minus 2 equal to 0. As we have already find, found out that the sum of the roots of a given equation is minus b upon a that is minus coefficient of x upon a which in this case will be minus of minus 1 upon 6 which is equal to 1 upon 6 and the product of the roots is equal to c upon a that is the constant term upon coefficient of x square which is equal to minus 2 upon 6 which is minus 1 upon 3. Thus, we found out the sum and the product of the roots of a given equation without actually finding out the roots of that equation. So, let us recapitulate what all we have learned in this lesson today. We have learned that given a quadratic equation a x square plus b x plus c equal to 0, where a is non 0 and a b c are real numbers, d is equal to b square minus 4 a c is called its discriminant. If d is greater than 0, then the equation will have real and distinct roots. If d is equal to 0, then the equation will have real and equal roots and if d is less than 0, then the equation will have no real roots. We also found out the sum and the product of the roots of a given quadratic equation without actually finding the roots. The sum of the roots of a given quadratic equation a x square plus b x plus c equal to 0 will be equal to minus b upon a that is minus coefficient of x upon coefficient of x square. The product of the roots of a given quadratic equation will be equal to c by a that is the constant term upon the coefficient of x square. So, children these are some of the problems for you to solve and please get them checked by a person of mathematics. In case of any difficulty you can write to us. Thank you.